Last time, we learned how to apply the Euler-Kromer method to the momentum principle with a constant force. After we give an object's initial position and initial momentum, we use one equation to update the momentum and a similar equation to update the position. By repeating this process, we can move our simulation forward as many steps as we want. Today, we're going to replace the constant force with a spring force. The spring force is incredibly useful in physics because it can be used to model the forces between atoms in a solid. The force on a spring is equal to the amount the spring has been stretched or compressed times a constant, all with a negative sign in front. The stretching amount will be treated as the position that we've worked with previously. The constant indicates the stiffness of the spring. A stiffer spring has a constant with higher value. The negative sign is important. It indicates that the spring will always push or pull so that it tries to return to equilibrium. This code is exactly the same as the previous, but with the constant force replaced by the spring force, negative times the spring stiffness times the position. Now, we know how springs behave. They oscillate back and forth. So when we run the code, we should see some sort of oscillatory behavior. And that's exactly what we get, a cosine curve. Notice that the amplitude of the cosine curve is exactly the same as the initial amount we stretched the spring by. But what determines the period of the curve? If we go back to our code and increase the spring stiffness, we'll see that we again get a cosine curve, but this time the period has decreased. A stiffer spring oscillates faster. You should now be able to use the Euler-Kromer method to animate an object experiencing a spring force. Follow the link in the description below to use this code to apply the Euler-Kromer method for the following values of the spring stiffness, mass, and initial position. How do the period and amplitude of the cosine curve change in each case? For an extra challenge, try changing the negative sign in the spring force to a positive and see what kind of motion results. Why does the motion behave so differently? Is this type of force physically reasonable? In the next video, we'll look at how we can check our results from the Euler-Kromer method.